This week on the Tiger Basketball Report, we'll discuss how the Tigers fared in their week-long trip against two CAA foes in North Carolina. Later, we'll discuss the Tigers' upcoming games against the College of Charleston and the Pride of Hostra. Get ready, fans. The Tiger Basketball Report begins now. fans and welcome to the Towson Sports Network studio for another edition of the Tiger Basketball Report. I'm your host Spiro Marigas. The Tigers recently took a five-day, four-night trip to North Carolina where they played two close games against Elon and UNC Wilmington. But before we dive into those, the Tigers took a short break from practice to go bowling where I was also a part of the fun and made fun of. All the details ahead with the coach of the Tigers, Pat Scary. I think this was a, a perfect opportunity to kind of build some team camaraderie, uh, guys compete together, you know, have a little fun and, and, and show a little uh, competitive spirit. We did a little scoring system. Uh, we, we divided every every guy, um, five teams, about four guys per team. And what we did was we took their highest score between the two. You're the champion bowler of the Towson University men's basketball team. I can just picture you on a Saturday night in January in York, Pennsylvania, with you and your buddies just hanging out at the bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, when I was younger, I used to bowl. I, I, guess, I guess, you know, I worked out the kinks a little bit early and got it going a little bit later. But I just want to get. My man John got. I'm not the only one. Were you a little disappointed in some of your teammates here tonight? Uh, I think we're just trying to figure out who is going to be the worst of us all. I think a real battle between TJ and Eddie right now. How about Coach Scary? He belongs in that mix too. Coach Flesher, you, you're the strength and conditioning coach, and as I look around, you're the only one complaining about ailments. <laughs> I'm getting old, Spiro. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't have any excuses. I'm falling off right now in the second game. I'm really falling off, really falling off. Does this mean you need to hit the gym a little harder? i got to get back in the weight room. i got to refine my, my spin. Uh, fatigue is taking over. Fatigue is taking over. Every day in practice, Coach Scary evaluates you. You've sat here and you've watched him bowl now for a game and a half. Can you evaluate his game for us? I mean, he's just a tremendous player out here. Uh, very consistent. He's consistently bad. <laughs> consistently bad. Uh, our team's struggling right now. He needs to step it up, be more aggressive out here, take control of the team, take more leadership and ownership out here. Have you told him that? 
I haven't told him that yet. I don't think I'm going to tell him that because we got a game tomorrow. And I kind of want to play. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. He got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed. I'll take it. Woo! Woo! Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride. Pride in our city, pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. Freshman calls, Coors Light answers. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Welcome back to the Tiger Basketball Report. I'm Spiro Marikas. The Tigers beat Elon in their first matchup this season in CQ Arena, but the road is always a tougher trip. The Tigers pulled off a victory with a tough matchup, and thanks to a last-second basket from freshman Mike Morsell, who finished with eight points, the Tigers came through with a victory. John Davis led all scores with 16 points and 10 rebounds, and the Tigers defeated the Phoenix 53-51. Coach, describe the difference between the first half and the second half in that game against Elon? Well, we got off to a really slow start. We struggled to score the ball the first, like, eight to ten minutes of that game. Um, and we, we were in a hole. But the, we, we got in a pretty good rhythm and, and fought back end of the first half. Then to Elon's credit, uh, it's, it's obviously a tough, tough little place to play up there. They, they were able to jump us early in the second half. And really the last, you know, probably six, seven minutes, we, we – just kind of clawed back. Uh, we had a major, major rebounding effort down the stretch of the game. Uh, I thought T.J. Parker and Johnny and Walter were just unbelievably uh, aggressive on the backboards. That got us back in the game. And, and I thought Byron Hawkins had a really good floor game, and including the big bucket by Morsell. Morsell made big plays late, but Hawkins had a couple of really good penetrating drop-offs late in that game. So I was, I was really pleased with the effort. In spite of the fact that we were 1 for 11 from the three-point line and 10 for 25 from the foul line, we found a way to win. And again, it was the rebounding. If you look at this during the course of that game, I believe with about eight minutes left, the rebounds were even. You ended up with a, what, plus 13 margin in that ball game, I think. Yeah, it was like 13 and 14. So we really late was like the last six minutes we got rebounded like 16 to 3. Which I think, you know, it speaks to our guys' uh, physical toughness, their endurance um, and it's even funny we won by 14 on the glass but you know we missed a lot of free throws it, it, it probably sh could have could or should have been a higher margin the other thing you didn't especially in the first half is you shut down their freshman Elijah Bryan who many feel is probably going to be the CAA rookie of the year you guys did a good job on him defensively he's a really good player um, and I thought we missed twice but we, we did a good job on the kid Samson both games I mean we're doing a really good job of guarding especially guarding the three-point shot and and that was important against Elon because they Bryant and Sampson re really shoot the three-pointer. Thank you, Coach. And before we continue, let's take a look at the highlights from the game against the Phoenix. And they'll restart the offense as he gets it to Hamilton on the right wing. Hamilton going to drive into the paint. He goes up, banks it home, and Elon leads 25-22. Hamilton being covered by Hawkins. Dribbles around to his left. Beat it on the left side to Blake over to Sampson on the right for three and he hits it. Sampson with his second three and he's 
He's got eight points. The Tigers down four, 30 to 26. 15:35 to go. Eddie Keith now running the point. I think that's the first time this year. Passing the left to Davis. Davis going to drive. Davis banks it home. What a move by John Davis through two Phoenix. He's got nine, and the Tigers have cut it to one, 31-30. Gets a screen from Davis. Back up top to McGlynn. Four. Brooks throws it up top to Hawkins. 15 on the shot clock. Hawkins steps back. 18-foot jumper is good. Byron Hawkins. Hawkins with his first points of the ball game, and the Tigers are down one. Hawkins gets it with Davis, gives it back to Hawkins, drives into the paint, puts up a floater and scores. Byron Hawkins with four second half points. Tigers down one, 37-36, 11.30 to go. Turn into the one and one is no good, and the rebound is grabbed by Morcell. He'll put it up and score. Mike Morcell gets the offensive board and hits the bucket. Tigers are down two, 41-39. Mike's first two points. Blake up top. Hamilton, three points. Shot good. Austin Hamilton with 10. Just his fifth three-pointer of the year. He's a 19% three-point shooter. He won by five. Low can't find anyone. Up top. Gets it to Thompson right side of the lane. To Hairston. Makes a move. Puts it up and backs it home. 46-39. Towson down seven to seven forty remaining. Tomas spins, loses control, gets it back, feeds it out to Morcell, dribbles in, 15-foot jumper is good. And a timeout called by Pat Scary with 7-17 remaining in the game. Towson is down 5, 46-41. Bryant brings it over midcourt, dribbling to his right. He's playing with four fouls. Gets double-teamed by Flash and Morcell. Drives down to the baseline, puts it up, blocked by Parker Rivera. Tamaj will bring it up the floor. Tigers up by one with 2.40 to go in the game. Try, Parker Rivera tries to pass it to Davis. Knocked away, stolen by Sampson. Gives it to Bryant. He'll launch a three-point shot. Good! 51-49, Elon with 1.35 to go. 12 seconds left. Hawkins with 10 out near midcourt with 8. Gets a screen, drives. Take it down the lane, feeds it out. Morcell to the foul line, jump shot is good. With 1.6 seconds left, the Tigers have taken a 53 to 51 lead. Mike Morcell with a foul line jumper, and the Tigers are 1.6 seconds away from victory. Anton throws a baseball pass. Bryant catches it, fires it at the buzzer, no good, and the Tigers have won. For the first time since January the 5th and for the first time since they last played Elon. So, Coach, you get that first victory on the road against Carol, uh, the Elon Phoenix down in Carolina. Came down to the last play of the game, really, where Mike Morsell with 1.6 seconds left, hits that jumper to win it. Describe, you didn't call a timeout there with the Tigers heading the ball late. A lot of coaches right away, they'll call a timeout to try to set something up. But you had a reason for not calling a timeout. They change defenses. They they go to a one three one, which I was really really worried about. Um, and I think as a coach, I was trying to learn. I uh, called one last year home against William and Mary, and then they changed the one three one, and we we, got, we were fortunate to get off a pretty good shot. So I, we got to stop. We were in transition, um, so I just felt like we needed to let them let them play. We we had ability to kind of beat them off the off the dribble, and we were able to get in the lane. So credit to our kids. But that that's that's why I didn't use the timeout. We had the ball. We had pretty good numbers at the time and and I was mostly worried about them changing to a 131 and maybe not getting the ball into the guy's hands that we were most comfortable with. Was Mike Morsell a guy you were comfortable with taking that final shot? Uh yeah, yeah, we get, we got the ball to Hawkins um and he came off the ball screen and really made a great play. He didn't force up a shot. He played off two feet. We we preach penetrate, pivot, find. He did that with Mike and then Mike's going to be really good. He's Taken a major step forward the last two three weeks, and and that will that will continue. I mean, I'm, I'm you know excited about where he's headed. So and he, what I really liked that night was he had missed two big shots before that, and he had the courage and, and short term memory to come back and make a big one. You also got you we touched on it earlier. John Davis with a double double, but Tamaj also had a double double in that ball game, and and Tamaj as we'll see later on against NC Wilmington. He got into some foul trouble and couldn't quite do that. You need to be consistent up front with those two guys, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, TJ had doubled up against them and William & Mary, and I really think he's been playing better. It was just it was a tough break at 
Wilmington. Uh, we need him on the floor. His toughness, his energy, his experience. Um, he's got great will. You know, it's he, he makes a big difference, and, and he he was a monster that night. So the Tigers get that victory against Elon, and coming on the other side of this break, we'll see how the Tigers fared in their second of the two games in North Carolina when they took on UNCW. The Tiger basketball report continues right after these words. Can we get a little help? We've got Pepsi. What if we just take like 15 minutes? Halfway through the game? They got Pepsi. Boom, boom, boom. Even than the so what do we call that? Halftime. I like it, though. Even the first halftime wasn't halftime without Pepsi. See Katy Perry live in the Pepsi Super Bowl 49 halftime show. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sungary, Pennsylvania, and it's locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Mariner Finance is a consumer finance company, so we offer personal loans. Mariner Finance is a great place to work. It's a great thing for anyone with the entrepreneurial spirit. Everybody in every office has an opportunity to achieve and grow. Be your own leader, be a leader amongst uh, the fellow co-workers in your office. The training and development that we do at Mariner Finance is one-on-one. -on -one. Someone who has been there, done it, experienced it. There is no better feeling. Learn with us. Grow with us. Grow with us. Welcome back to the Tiger Basketball Report. I'm Spiro Maricus. The Tigers took on the Seahawks of UNC Wilmington Saturday in Trask Coliseum. The Tigers fought from a 15-point deficit until the very end, but ultimately fell short of completing the comeback, losing to the Hawks 69-65. The Tigers again led by another double-double. John Davis, a career-high 26 points to go with 11 rebounds. So before we get into the discussion about the game, let's take a look at the highlights from down in Wilmington, North Carolina. Ivory over midcourt. Ivory to the top of the key, flips it to Davis. He'll try. He slams it home. A monster slam by John Davis from about seven feet out. It's seven to six. Tigers down one with 16.08 to go here in the first half. Jackson trying to give Wilmington their first double digit lead, and he does. 23 to 13 with 8.39 to go in the first half. Again, the back to pressure. Ivory against the baseline, throws it to Gavril over the head to Davis. John going to drive. John underneath. He lays it up, and he's got eight points. 23 to 15 off the back of the rim. No, rebound Ivory. Ivory gets it over midcourt. Comes down the right side, passes to his left to Davis, takes it straight in, and a second slam dunk to the ball game. And the Tigers are down 7, 27 20, and John Davis is keeping them in the game. He's got 13 points and 7 rebounds with 420 left here in the first half. He's standing right over midfield on the left side, now he'll dribble to his right. Comes down, gonna take it down the lane, drives, lays it up, missed it. Rebound is grabbed by no one. Now Davis comes up with it. John going to drive. He stops, puts up a little hook shot. No tap up and in by Eddie Keith. 29 22. Tigers down seven with a minute 35 to go in the half. Back out to Hawkins. 10 on the shot clock in the mid court circle. Byron gets a screen from Foster. Dribbles to his right. Going to fire a three point shot. Good. The first three pointer by either side. Byron Hawkins. And it's 35-29. Hawkins with six. 
Looks, throws it down low to Geddes. Double team, turns, shoots, rolls around the rim, won't go. Rebound is grabbed by Williams, who lays it up and in. Cedric Williams is killing the Tigers. He's got 13. Mike down the left side, holds it up, gives it to Hawkins. Hawkins thought about the three. Now he's going to drive. Hawkins puts it up. Basket's good, and he's fouled. He'll go for the three-point play when we come back. 15-11 remaining in the ball game, and the Tigers are starting to eat into this Wilmington lead. It is now UNCW 37, Towson 34. Rebound Ponder. Ponder brings it over midcourt. Ponder drives. Ponder lays it up. Rejected by Keith. They're going to call him both hands. 45-40 Wilmington with 12.37 to go. Hawkins gets double teamed, throws it over midcourt to Foster, ahead to Davis, nobody home! His third slam dunk of the night, he's got 19, the Tigers are down three, 45-42 with 12.20 remaining in the game. Feed to Sproul on the baseline, drives into the paint, turns, spins, banks it, baskets good in his feet. And that's on Walker Foster, that's his third. Tigers down seven to Foster. Foster gives it off to Parker Rivera. Down low to Davis. Davis going to go up. Davis scores. 21 for John. The Tigers down 11. 55-44 with 9.25 to go. Tigers down seven. Four minutes to go. Feed to Davis. Drive. John puts it up. Baskets good and he's fouled. John Davis with 23 points. And the Tigers have cut it to five with four minutes to go. Keith gets a screen from Foster to the foul line, into the paint, puts up a floater, rolls around and goes. Eddie Keith with six points. Tigers down four, 62-58, 308 to go. Jackson to the foul line, feeds it down low, he threw it right to Foster. Ahead to Morsell, Mike gonna drive, Mike lays it up and in. Tigers down two with 233 to go and a timeout called by Kevin Keats. Tigers had cut it to 41-40 early in the second half after being down nine in the half. Keith ties it, makes them both. 62 all, minute 42 to go. Ponder dribbles to his left, comes in, and he is fouled. And they count the basket. Hawkins. It's a screen from Foster. Dribbles to his right, to the foul line. Into the paint, in trouble, hands it off to Foster, down low to Davis, pumps, lays it up, basket's good, and he's fouled. John Davis with a career-high 25, and the Tigers have cut it to two with 51.6 seconds left. Two and a half seconds to go, Tigers are down two. Sproul gets set, puts this one up, and it's good. So the Tigers have two and a half seconds to hit a three. Bullet pass to no one, it goes out of bounds. Coach, your team defended the three very well, keeping them uh, shooting a poor percentage and 39% overall from the field. But your free throw shooting was not good as you were below 50%, and, and that really was the difference in this ball game. Yeah, Wilmington's good. They get good seniors, and uh, it was a, an electric atmosphere. And the crowds are coming back. Yeah, it was an electric atmosphere down there Saturday night, uh, you know, in a national TV game, and that was it was good, good for our guys. And foul shooting hurt us. We were 14 for 29, and we missed three or four front ends of one-on-ones. That ultimately, you know, going back probably was our demise. Um, thought we struggled against their pressure early. And then really settled in and did a good job, especially Hawkins. Uh, we shot 60% in the second half. Um, we ran out of time. It was a funny game. We ran out of timeouts with 10 and a half minutes left, which has never happened to me. I told the guys during the last time I said, okay, hey, the bad news is we have no timeouts. No timeouts. The good news is you obviously weren't listening anyhow to what was going on, so we don't have to worry about getting together again. And really down the stretch, we played, you know, Hawkins, Morsell, and Eddie Keith, along with Walter Foster, who was very good, and Johnny Davis was spectacular. So three freshmen, two sophomores. 62 of your 65 points came from freshmen and sophomores. And as you know, we got it all the way back uh, to two with the ball. I would have liked to have a timeout at that point, and we had two shots at it late. Uh, one, you know, one we, Eddie lost the ball on the way to the basket, and then we had a chance to run a home run play, and we had a little bit of a miscalculation. Um, but, you know, it, it's against a good club, the fact that we shot so poorly from the foul line, um, you know, uh, 
I mean, we were in a position still to maybe steal the thing, and, and you know, it did, which is kind of mind-boggling when you think about how, how badly we were from the free throw line. You look, and there's three teams sitting in first place in the CAA. You've got UNCW, along with Northeastern, and William & Mary. So you've played them all one time. Good clubs, all good clubs. Right. Northeastern, you almost beat here at CQ Arena. Uh, William & Mary, you took late into the ball game. They kind of pulled away late. Mm -hmm. And then UNCW took them down to the final two seconds of the game at their place. Obviously, this shows you guys can play with anybody in the conference. Yeah, I think we know that. Um, you know, I, I've said all along I like, I like the group. Uh, you know, we, we've still got to be consistent. I think the consistency, we're starting, we, we've, been, we've been pretty good offensive, uh, defensively and on the glass, and we've had some incremental improvements in our offense. Uh, um, I, I think the biggest thing for us right now is the consistency in what we're getting out of each guy each night. I think you're starting to see some really good things with uh, some of our freshmen and that has to maintain and, and I think you're starting to see Foster and Davis and you know before Willington we got a great great night out of Parker so now if we can you know we all know McGlynn is a very good player so if we can get that going I think we can be a factor. Um, what gets concerning is when it's two or three guys really good one night, and then it's two or three different guys really good the other night, and, and you know, we, we've got to, I think, moving forward, avoid that. Um, but this, this, it's a wide open league, it, it, it really is, and, and I, I really feel like you know, when that conference tournament comes around, there's going to be, you know, maybe not to the coach as a surprise, but to maybe to the casual observer, like, oh, that was a surprise champion that came out of that conference tournament. It's going to go down to the wire, there's no question about that. We have to take one final break, but we will be back with more of the Tiger Basketball Report after this, and Coach Scary is going to have a stat nobody's going to believe when we come back. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride. Pride in our city. Pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible health care system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. We got the paper! Whoa! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed, I'll take it. Whoa! Whoa! Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. Right now, you can get a single line with three gigs for $65 a month. Three gigs, is that a lot? That's about 100 app downloads, 45 hours of streaming music, and six hours of video playing. And five golden rings. Oh, I see what you did. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. I really went for it there. Yeah, you did. You really, really did. Now get three gigs of data on one line for $65 a month. Switch to AT&T, buy a new smartphone, and get a $150 credit per line. Welcome back to the Tiger Basketball Report. Coach, your next set of games are against the College of Charleston at CQ Arena on Thursday night, and then Saturday you head to Long Island to take on Hofstra for the first time. The last two teams left that you have not played yet. Before we get to those games, though, you told me something I'm still trying to figure out. The team is shooting 55.9% from the free throw line in conference play and about 63% overall on the season. But you have a stat that a lot of folks aren't going to believe. We're, well, they'll believe this. We're like 304th in the country in free throw percentage right now, which isn't good. Um, but we're first in the country in the percent of points that we get from the foul line. Um, <laughs> so if we can start making some free throws, we might set a record. Uh, and we're getting, getting to the foul line, which is something that we, you know, is a point of emphasis. So that's, that's good. And, and we'll, we'll make them. We'll make them. Uh, it's, we're, we're due to make them. Yeah, sure are. We could have a couple of 95% shooting games 
That'd be nice. Up. That'd be nice. Sure would be. Okay. College of Charleston and Hofstra, you haven't played either one of those teams. College of Charleston, their leading scorer is uh, Canyon Barry, the son of Rick Barry. They have a new coach, came in late because of some problems that were going on down there at Charleston, and they've struggled. They're, they're, they're only 1-7 and seven in the conference, but their last two games, they lost in overtime, and they lost by two points to Northeastern and uh, to Delaware, I believe. This is a team that, much like you, could be a lot closer to first than they are to last. There's no question. They're good. Uh, Barry is a terrific scorer. Joe Cheely, the other sophomore they have at the point, is reminds you of Sam Cassell. He's, he's a really good player. Uh, Earl Grant's doing a good job. They run a lot of good things on offense. They're a prolific three-point shooting team. And then they got Baru inside, who that's that's my kind of guy. I mean, and he's missed a lot of games, so yeah, he, he's, he's coming back. Well, let's hope he misses Thursday because he's a he's a killer. Uh, he is an absolute killer. He plays hard. He scores the ball. He rebounds. He impacts the game. So, yeah, they're good. They Wilmington blocked the shot at the buzzer to beat them. They lost at Northeastern by three. You know, um, Drexel Damian Lee just on Saturday threw in a fadeaway three at the buzzer to you know with a little buzz eleven seconds left to beat them by one. You know, so they. They're like us. They've lost a lot of close games. We've got to play well. Our, our, and, and our kids know that. We have tremendous respect for Charleston, and that's the league. I mean, maybe more so than any year that the league's at. It's, it's, it's going to be the ability to close games kind of in, 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 the, in the crux of the game. That Those are the teams that are going to have great success. I mean, credit to Wilmington. They're sitting in first place. They've won all kinds of close games. Now, then Saturday you head to Long Island to take on Hofstra which is a completely different team than it was last year because of transfers. Joe Mahalik in his second, second, third year? Second. Second yeah. year now at, at, at Hofstra. So he has turned things around. He brought a couple of his guys from Niagara into Hofstra, and they've made an immediate impact in the CAA. Yeah, Joe's doing a great job. Uh, she did a great job at Niagara. Hofstra's a good job. Uh, Green and Tanksley that came from Niagara are really, really good. Hofstra is explosive on offense. They got another transfer, Bernardi, local kid, was at SMU that shoots it. So... You know, they got Naismith back from last yeah, year. You got to take away a three-point shot. Uh, they they really really score the basketball, um, and you know they'll they'll present a, you know, a, a, a different type of challenge. Um, hopefully we can do what we've done, which is, be pretty stingy and taking away the three-point shot. And if you take care of the ball on the road, then you have a chance of the game. But they, they they might be them and William and Mary, and they might be better than this. They're like the one team that. Seems like I saw them blow out Elon a couple weeks ago at Elon, which is tough to do. And they just they made some crazy, crazy three point shots. They have they have that ability in them, um, and so that that makes them not only talented but extremely dangerous. Yeah, one of those teams that if they get on a roll and start making threes, they just start raining down from everywhere. Well, we have to say goodbye, Coach. <laughs> and I'll leave you with this. Because we're doing all this talk about foul shooting and everything else, the great Abe Lemons once was asked, how are your outside shooters? And he said, I don't care. We play inside. <laughs> I like that. I like that, right? Feed a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach him how to fish, he eats forever, Spiro. There we go. <laughs> As we have mentioned, the Tigers will be back at home this Thursday where they will welcome the College of Charleston at 7 o'clock before taking on Hofstra this Saturday at 8. You can purchase tickets online at TowsonTigers.com or call 1-855-TU-TIGER. Coverage starts at 6.45 Thursday with the Coors Light Countdown to Tip-Off on CBS Sports Radio 1300. And Saturday's game will begin at 7.45 on CBS Radio 1300 with the game being broadcast by the American Sports Network. Thanks for watching another episode of the Tiger Basketball Report, and go Tigers!